Hey, what's up, Fiber folks? Welcome back or welcome to High Fiber Knits. My name is Emily, and today I wanted to share 10 knitting patterns for summer that I think are underrated but you should know about. So this video is completely and totally inspired by my friend Rachel from Night Sky Knitting. Uh, she recently hosted a giveaway for reaching 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, even though she's now like blown past that and is at 2K. Uh, and the comment prompt for that giveaway was to name a pattern or a designer that her viewers thought was underrated. Um, and similarly, in one of her recent podcast episodes, she was talking about how she knit her fortune sweater by Petite Knit, which is a pattern that she doesn't see talked about much by English speaking podcasters, but she's seen a good handful of them knit by French speaking knitting podcasters here on YouTube. And so um, we met up for coffee a couple of weeks ago just to like chat and knit. And we were talking about how while social media for knitting can be a really good source of inspiration, it can also turn into this like echo chamber where we're seeing like the same 10 patterns by big designers being knit all the time. And I'm totally a culprit of this. My knitwear collection is very abundant in petite knit, sorry Nordland, and my favorite things knitwear patterns. And so I think like we talk a lot about supporting indie yarn dyers, um, which is fabulous and like supporting local, but I think we can do better in terms of sharing and showing uh, other knitwear designers who are maybe less prominent. So I've got a whole bunch of patterns to share with you. My idea of like less known or less prominent is less than 100 projects knit on Ravelry. So for all of these, I'll share why I think it's an interesting pattern. Uh, as well as when it's available, what the size ranges are like. Some of the patterns are more size inclusive than others, but I want to sort of give a rationale as to why I'm sharing all of these patterns. Um, I'll try to let you know what type of yarn is called for in the pattern. And I've tried to include some things with a whole bunch of different like style and design aesthetics. So hopefully there's a little bit of something for everyone. So we're just gonna jump straight into it. I think I'm going to go with like the T's first. And the first pattern I want to talk about, maybe not necessarily underrated because it's by Sandness Garn and I, I think Sandness Garn is pretty popular, but it's a very unique pattern, I think. So I want to share with you the chamomile tea or chamomile t-shirt by Sandness Garn. And the reason why I find this pattern to be so intriguing is like, first of all, the model is absolutely stunning, but I've never seen this sort of like deep V polo style, oversized sort of breezy t-shirt presented in knitting form before. I think it was like maybe fall 2020, the like cashmere polo style pullover that didn't have any buttons or like a button placket was like really popular in fast fashion. And this kind of reminds me of like a toned down, chilled out summer version of that. So the chamomile tea by Sandness Garn is I believe only available through their website with a purchase of Tin Lina, which is one of the yarns that they produce that's recommended for the pattern. So there might be some barriers there to being able to access the pattern. And in terms of sizing on their website, they use over width as a measurement in the size guide. And the extra small is 107 centimeters and the triple XL is 133 centimeters. So do with that information what you will. Uh, like I said, I was just really struck by how unique and cool and effortless this pattern looked. The second pattern I want to tell you about is the Koi Tea by Ginkgo Bee. What I really love about this pattern is the squared off boat neck neckline, which I think can be really flattering for the summer and just create this feeling of openness. I find that sometimes with knitted tees, I either see really wide or like straight across boat necks or very closed up necks, which 
makes sense as far as construction goes. Uh, but I appreciate sort of this look of balance, I suppose, in the neckline of the koi tee. Another thing that I really love about this t-shirt is the detail that comes down the side and finishes in the split hem with the ribbing. Because although this is a cropped tee, I think it's a very intentional looking design detail that gives it this really architectural vibe that again, even though it's like a basic, has a little bit of visual interest or something different to it. So this pattern calls for fingering weight yarn and it is graded for sizes 34 inches through 64 inches and that's across eight sizes so not too bad i think that's actually quite good all right sorry i'm like clicking through my ravelry on my tablet so i have all the information here i didn't like actually make notes anyway the next t-shirt pattern i want to share with you is the ridgeview tee by carrie bloomer and similarly to the koi tee, I wanted to share this with you because I really like the textured ribbing detail that creates this V that comes up the center and out to the shoulders. I think if you're looking for sort of adding some width or shape, this pattern is great because the way it looks like it's constructed is in such a way that like the T sleeve doesn't have a seam or a raglan, it kind of just is tapered at the waist and opens up to accommodate for the shoulders. Again, a very classic looking kind of silhouette, I think, but with that added visual detail from the textured rib, it could be very special. This pattern is knit up in DK weight yarn and it is graded for 32 to 72 inches. So that's like, that's awesome. That's really cool. I like to see that. So. Again, beautiful pattern, classic tee with a twist, probably can't go wrong. The next t-shirt, which is I think a little more feminine than a classic tee design, is the Desert Bloom Top by Rachel Kurihara. This top is a faux wrap tee with a really sweet frill that goes all the way around the hem. And what I love about this pattern is that it can really take on the character of whatever yarn you choose to use. So in Rachel's sort of pattern page sample, she's used this oatmeal-y uh, colored yarn, and I think it gives it a very sophisticated look. But if you wanted to go for a really fun, bright pop of color to have like a really statement summer piece that just feels like a lot of fun to wear, you could totally go for that. So. I really appreciate that. This pattern is knit in a sport weight yarn, which there are really good options for sport weight yarn, but I feel like it's a little bit more difficult to come across than like your typical DK or fingering weight. That's no matter. And then the sizing goes from a 31 inch to a 64 inch bust, including zero to 10 centimeters of positive ease at the end. So I think this pattern is really beautiful. Again, depending on how much ease you go for, you can get a very different vibe from it, which will suit whatever your taste is. The next pattern I wanna share with you is the only one in this list that has color work, and it's the Nomad Tee by Rachel Ilsley. What really struck me about this t-shirt was the, the colorway motif, and it's really reminiscent to me of the ECOT dye technique, which you often see like a lot of diamond shapes. And I think the way the technique is done is like resist is applied to the fabric before the dye. So in the places where the resist has been placed, the fabric doesn't take the dye. Uh, but this sort of color work motif is really, really striking. And I think gives it this sort of vacation-y vibe, if that's fair for me to say. And I was just really happy to see a colorwork summer pattern because colorwork often adds yarn, which adds thickness to the fabric. Um, and typically if you see any design elements like that in summer knitting patterns, you're looking at lace work because you're getting spaces or holes in the fabric that allow for ventilation. 
So yeah, I thought it was really fun to see a color work pattern. And the reason for that is also that depending on the color palette you choose, you can go for a really earthy neutral vibe, or you can go for a neutral vibe with a pop of color, or you can just really go for it and do some like bright high contrast colors. So this pattern calls for fingering weight yarn and it is knit on, on kind of small needles, but that's okay. And it's graded for extra small to 5XL with a recommended positive ease of 10 to 30 centimeters with finished garment chest circumference of 35.5 to 66 inches. So again, that's pretty good as far as size inclusivity goes, I would say. The next, I think this is the last tea that I want to share, is called The Brightest Tea by Lily Kate France. And this really popped out to me in Ravelry because the photo, the pattern photo, she's wearing these like white pants and just a hot pink t-shirt. It's so bright, it's so fun. It's very like cute and adorable. This is a fitted tee with a cap sleeve. And so the reason I wanted to share this is because in the summertime, sometimes you wanna have your shoulders covered up still. But if you know me, you know I don't like having fabric or stuff like high up in my underarm. Like you can see, I mean, this is just a thrifted cotton button down that I basically live in as long as it's 15 degrees Celsius or warmer. I don't like having a lot of fabric in my underarm. So if you want a sleeve or some shoulder coverage without all of that fabric that goes into the underarm, I think the cap sleeve detail is an excellent choice. This pattern is also knit in fingering weight yarn and it's graded to fit a 28 to 62 inch bust. The rest of the tops I want to share with you are sleeveless tops. And the first one is the Vitska tank. Vitska? It's W I E T S K E. I think it's Vitska tank because I think the designer is German by Steffi Haberkern. And what really, what I really like about this pattern is how reminiscent it is of the My Favorite Things knitwear camisole patterns, but I think it really fills a gap in the My Favorite Things knitwear pattern collection because very similarly to like number two and number five, this pattern is done in all over rib and it has really nice finishes around the neckline and the armholes, but it has a higher up armhole and much wider straps than for example, the camisole number five does. And so I think for folks who would like to knit a sleeveless top and like the design aesthetic of the My Favorite Things Knitwear Chemisole Collection, but are looking for something that's going to give them more coverage on the shoulders, especially for things like bra straps, this is an excellent option. Similarly to those My Favorite Things Knitwear patterns, this one does call for the Knitting for Olive fingering weight yarns. Um, so the Pure Silk, the Merino, the Cotton Merino, all of them would work. But I will say this pattern is probably the least size inclusive of all of the ones that I'm mentioning today. This one goes from a 27.1 to a 43.7 inch bust uh, for finished measurements. But there's also, I think, 10 centimeters, so four inches of negative ease accounted for in that. So really the largest bust size you're getting to is about 48 inches, I think, which is not fabulous. If you're comfortable making modifications to patterns for increasing sizing, this one looks like it would be relatively easy to do that for, but if you do fit within the sizes that this has been graded for and are looking for, you know, a tank with more coverage, this is the one, I think. The next top I want to share with you, oof, sorry, I'm sitting on my feet. It's kind of painful, my like, getting pins and needles in my toes. Um, I'm literally just sitting on hardwood floor. Anyway, the next pattern is also sort of a more high coverage type of sleeveless top. 
and it is the bathers top by emily louise and i really enjoy this pattern also because it has this like high neck look it's not quite a halter it looks very clean breezy she's wearing a really cute bucket hat in the modeling photos so um this is just a really staple looking tank that I think does again offer some more coverage compared to some of the really popular camisole patterns. It's knit in sport weight yarn. It's graded for 12 sizes from a 30 to a 74 inch bust. So again, super awesome. I think there are not short rows. I thought there were short rows in this. Uh, but anywho, that's not the important part. It's mostly stockinette, so it looks like a pretty simple knit. Again, I just wanted to offer like another staple if you're not really interested or keen on knitting like double ribbon fingering weight yarn on three millimeter needles. This is the one that you're going to want to go for instead. So that's the Bathers by Emily Louise. Now, these last two patterns, I'm really, really excited to share with you because although they're the most revealing out of the whole collection that I've shared with you today, they're the only two patterns that offer customization. So you can really get a fit that's perfect to your body. And I think if you are opting to knit something that is going to be more revealing, there's just some comfort in knowing that the finished object you have is really meant for you. So the first pattern is the Made You Look Top by Ocean Knits, and the designer's name is Vanessa Fleming. Ocean Knits has this line of the Made You patterns that all feature this gathered bust with sort of like a tie sometimes at the front. And so this Made You Look Top has thin straps that sort of come through a channel to tie at the front and create that gathering effect. Underneath the bust, it's all ribbing, so it'll sit against your body really closely. But according to the pattern page, you can have up to 110 size variations depending on your under bust measurement and your bust measurement. So the stockinette portion, you can do sort of calculations within the pattern to make sure that it shapes to your bust perfectly. You can have as much or as little sort of exposure as you would like in that realm. So this pattern is actually one of the only air and weight ones that I came across. And I think that's great as well because it'll make it a really nice and quick knit. And I think it's pretty easy to find like air and weight cottons on the market currently if that's what you're looking for. I think in her pattern, she suggests we have Wool in the Gang Shiny Happy Cotton, which I've personally never used, but I've heard many folks have used it and enjoy it, as well as the Blue Sky Fibers Organic Cotton Worsted. Maybe they sell it in another sort of weight. Yes, weight. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, so yes, Erin Weight, only pattern so far I've shared that comes in the, or calls for Erin Weight. And this is graded for under bust sizes, 25 to 45 inches. But again, <laughs> but again, because you have all of that bust customization, you can get a really tailored fit for yourself. And finally, the 8 p.m. tank by Tiffany Tai, who you can also find as Tiff Knit. This is a DK weight pattern that has the body knit in rib and then this really cool like modern looking welt that separates the rib from the bust portion and that bust portion is the piece again that is fully customizable for your size and i think that this pattern has like a really cool kind of like metropolitan type of design aesthetic, if that makes, sorry, I feel like I keep spinning. 
like a metropolitan or like a modern kind of edgy. That's what I'm looking for. I think this is the edgiest pattern out of all of them. Like the made you look sort of that milkmaid style is very kind of like cottage core feminine. Whereas this one's sort of more edgy and cool looking, if that makes sense. So DK white yarn, again, fully customizable. I believe bottom up finishes with some straps that I think you can also customize the thickness of. And last but not least, the sizes. It is made to measure, once again, for 25 to 50 inch under bust. So sweet, good job. I was actually, I have to say, when I started looking through Ravelry, um, I kind of did a bit of a deep dive because I have those three balls of Holskar and Super Soft in the colorway Truffle. And I started a camisole number two in that yarn. And I think the gauge was a little too holy or like gapey for my taste. And I just don't think that yarn is destined to become a camisole. So I wanted to look more into t-shirts and other summer knits and and I was like, you know what? A lot of these are super cool and really interesting and things that I would love to make. So I would like to make a video about all of these patterns that I think are underrated. But I was kind of concerned that most of the patterns I would find uh, would not be size inclusive because it seems like a lot of the summer tops that are being talked about currently, or at least I recently knit the Vegas top and that wasn't really size inclusive. Um, so all of this is to say, I was just pretty impressed by how size inclusive these patterns turned out to be. And like full disclosure, I kind of made a short list of patterns and then looked at the sizing as opposed to selecting just based off of sizing. Cause I was curious to know you know, if I just pick these ones that I'm interested in, what is their size inclusivity going to look like? It's like a mini experiment. Um, so yeah, I was, I was just pleasantly surprised about that. So again, I will not again, those are all of the patterns I wanted to share with you. Of course, everything designers patterns going to be linked below. I like to think that I'm quite good about keeping a thoroughly detailed description box. So all of that information is going to be down below. Um, and I hope you found some inspiration in this video. I know I am definitely like guilty as charged in terms of knitting patterns from big names. And I think like to an extent, it's fair. The more you see people have knit something, the more confident you feel in your own choices of maybe yarn or color sizing so you have a better idea of the fit because you've seen the pattern on more bodies um but i think it's also important to explore other things that are out there you know if social media is an echo chamber then this is me sort of shouting into that echo chamber hopefully something a little different because i i don't know i felt like a little conflicted sharing and talking about my Vegas top by Paula Streaked because it currently isn't a size inclusive pattern. I did reach out to the designer and she said, I would like to expand my size range, but I would need testers to test those sizes in German. And it's a little harder to find German speaking test knitters, I guess, compared to the size of the community that can test in English. Um, so I was like, feeling a little conflicted because I was like, I know this isn't a size inclusive pattern necessarily, but I've knit it, I should share it. And then I had so many people reach out to me thereafter saying, I bought this pattern or I'm knitting this pattern because I saw yours and I loved yours. And it just made me realize and reflect on the fact that, you know, even though High Fiber Knits is growing, it doesn't matter how many subscribers I have on YouTube or how many followers I have on Instagram, like the things that I'm sharing and the things that I'm saying are having influence on other people. 
So um, I kind of wanted to take this as an opportunity to do something positive with that influence. Not that like I'm actively trying to do anything negative here on High Fiber Knits, um, but just maybe a little something different. There we go, a little something different. So anyway, like I said, I hope you found some inspiration in this video. I hope you enjoyed listening to me talk. I feel like I've been really enjoying making videos lately. Um, at the time I'm filming this, I just did three videos, like three posts in three weeks, which um, might seem like a lot. I know typically knitting podcasts, it's like once every few weeks or even once every month. Um, you'll see people showing their makes and definitely sometimes it's the case for me, but I've just been really vibing with things lately and I'm going for it. So I hope you're vibing with me because I've been feeling inspired. I've been having fun. I'm rambling. Thanks so much for hanging out everybody. And until I get to see you again, I'm wishing you all health and happy knitting. Bye.